Hi, I'm Mrs. Sloan, and this is a video all about cell division. Part one is going to be about mitosis, the cell cycle and mitosis, and part two will be about myomyomyosis. So for my honors biology students, let me make myself a little bit smaller here. Um, this is the beginning of our heredity unit. All right. And there we go. So um, the notes that go along with this are down in the descriptor of the video and you're free to use those. Column one is the scaffolding and I'll help you fill that in. And column two, I encourage my students to put pictures in that help them um, with their understanding of the material. So this chapter for us is chapter five. It's all about cell division. So this little boy or girl skin their knee and they're going to need to create some more cells to repair that damage there. So there's two types of cell division, mitosis and my, meiosis. For me, I go my, my arms, my legs, mitosis, and I'm pointing to my toes right now because that's where that takes place. It's for growth and repair. And my, oh my meiosis gets you ready for sex. So in this case, to repair knee cells here, we're just going to need mitosis. Now, here's a picture of a cell undergoing mitosis in my class. We'll watch a quick little video about that. So the, um, to understand when mitosis occurs normally, not just when we have damaged tissues, um, we need to understand the cell cycle a little bit better. So the cell cycle is at when this little baby is growing up, right? Going from just a zygote, a fusion of a sperm and an egg to um, a living organism with millions and millions of cells, then that type of cell division is mitosis. All the daughter cells are clones of the original parent cell. Now, cells that are not reproductive cells are called somatic or body cells. Um, myomymiosis, this is when you form haploid cells, like I said, getting ready for sexual reproduction. So for the cell cycle, and we'll do a quick overview of it first, okay, the bulk of the cell spends its time in interphase. Now interphase actually has three parts to it, G1, S, and G2, and I'll differentiate between those. And then the M stage consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. And the first thing we need to get in our head is when we talk about mitosis, that is all about the nucleus of the cell where the genetic material is. And we're talking about the separation of chromosomes throughout mitosis. Cytokinesis thinks cytoplasm. And in that, that part, you're dividing everything else. So mitosis is just the nucleus. Cytokinesis is all the organelles and the cytoplasm. And cytokinesis really technically happens kind of overlapping with um, telophase, a stage of mitosis. Okay, now let's look at these three different parts of um, interphase, G1, S, and G2. Right here at G1, you can see a little off-ramp here. This is G0. This is for non-dividing cells. So if you're done, no more growth, Mrs. Sloan is not getting any taller, that's done for her, then my cells have entered G0 for height. I'm not getting any taller. Now, each of um, these kind of make more sense if you just think about it logically. If you just finished cytokinesis in the M stage, then all of your cytoplasm has been halved, all of your organelles have been halved. And so the G1 portion, that's when you're making more organelles. The S stage of interphase, the S stands for synthesis, and this is when you're getting ready to do mitosis again, so all your DNA replicates. And then in G2, you're primarily focused on making more proteins in anticipation of going into the M stage and mitosis. So the first part on your notes, so this is 5.1. Um, stages of interphase, G1, cell grows larger, cell grows larger, organelles increase, and then put a little dash off after that and put um, can enter G0, can enter G0 and stop dividing. The S stage is for DNA synthesis, getting ready, your chromosomes are all replicating, and then G2, um, primarily focused on proteins being synthesized. Um, the M stage right here, mitosis, is all about nuclear division, nuclear division, and you're producing two nuclei that contain the exact same DNA. 
two nuclei that contain the exact same DNA, one nucleus for each cell. That's what you're getting ready for. And then cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm forming two cells, forming two cells. So let me just show you a quick little diagram of that. So the dark outer line is your cell membrane. The dashed line is your nuclear envelope. Inside, these are meant to be chromosomes. Now, during the S stage of interphase, you actually don't see them as chromosomes. It looks more like something you pull out of your hairbrush, just a mass of DNA and proteins. I have just condensed them here in this diagram just for simplicity and understanding. These out here are supposed to represent different organelles. I know they're not perfect. This right here, do you have any guesses what this one is? And actually, let me get a pointer real quick. Okay, this right here is supposed to be powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria, good. This could be a lysosome. These are proteins right here, and um, they are not drawn to scale. They would be very, very tiny. All right, so what's going to happen? Well, in G1, your organelles should double. So look at the organelles out in the cytoplasm, okay? So they've all doubled right here in G1, which I'm pointing to, okay? What stage follows G1? The S stage, and the S stage, do you remember what happens? Okay, that's when your DNA replicates. So you can see here, now what we have here are sister chromatids. These are exact copies of the original chromosomes. And we will learn that process in a later chapter. Okay, G1S, what follows S? G2, and now we have increased in our proteins. And then we're ready to do mitosis and cytokinesis in order to form two cells. All right, so hopefully that's a good um, little review for you. Now, controlling the cell cycle, when it does this, if you think about this in the big picture, somebody who's lost an arm or a leg, limbs, uh, had a spinal cord injury you want to you it would be great if you could turn on those cells and get them to do the cell cycle again right so they could regrow that lost la, uh, that lost limb or conversely um cancer is when cells keep growing and you're making more and more cells when you don't want them you wish you could turn it off so control of the cell cycle is really a big deal and so there's two main parts to controlling the cell cycle and i think it's helpful if you think about an airport analogy if you show up at the airport you can't get very far in an airport unless you show them your ticket right that you have that there's a reason for you to be at that airport then once you've shown them that ticket it, you go through security. For us, it's TSA. And so you have to make sure that you are not bringing anything on the airplane that you shouldn't, right? They're going to go through your luggage and your baggage and you have a screening. So it's very similar in the cell cycle. The presence of cyclins, cyclins are like the ticket. This is a signal to the cell that increases in numbers that facilitates until the, the cell cycle go to the next step, leave G1 and go into S. And so you're, you're facilitating, leave uh, G2 and go into the mitotic stage. So there are cyclins for that. Then number two, you need to make sure on each step as you move through the cell cycle, just like you move through the airport, you need to clear security. And so we have three checkpoints for that. How does all of this start happening? Well, the basics is you have internal and external signals that trigger you that increase those cyclins to move forward that provides that ticket for you. And that signal molecule can either um, stimulate or inhibit an event. And an example of an external signal would be a growth factor telling you to grow. So on your notes, control of the cell cycle. First thing we wanna have, let me go back here so you have this. Next to control of the cell cycle, you want the presence of cyclins presence of cyclins, and you need to pass through, uh, pass through checkpoints, all right? And then these are the notes for the next part on the basics, controlled by external and internal signals. And then a signal is a molecule that either stimulates or inhibits a metabolic event, and examples of that are growth factors. So now let's go look at those checkpoints and those cyclins. So here, just refresh your mind here about uh, the cell cycle, right? So it's G1, remember, this is when we're making more organelles. S is when you're doing DNA replication. G2, you're making a bunch of proteins. Here we can see the M stage. These are the 
steps of mitosis and then cytokinesis. So you can see you need specific cyclins, and I'm only showing you two here, but there are more, specific cyclins to enter the S stage, that's like your ticket, and specific cyclins need to be present in order to enter the M stage. There are three main checkpoints. These are like stop. This would be like going through security three times before you get on that airplane, right? And the really critical one is right here. And this one makes sure you just did mitosis. You just replicated your cell and you've done cell division. Did you do it correctly? That's what this G1 checkpoint is all about. Okay. G2, are you ready? You have replicated your DNA here in the S stage. You've replicated your chromosomes. Did you do it accurately? And then this M checkpoint right here is you are in the middle of mitosis. Are all your chromosomes lined up in the right place? Are we ready to do cell division? Are there no errors in the little mitotic dance that we're doing? So on your notes where it says checkpoints, you want to put next to that three. And the cell is checked to see if DNA is damaged or can't be repaired or chromosomes are not lining up correctly. And they will stop, pause, try to fix any errors that there are. If they can't fix those errors, if there's any trouble, then you've got to just kill the cell off. And that process is called apoptosis. So apoptosis is cellular suicide. Um, now that happens, yes, if there's a problem with your cells, but apoptosis is a normal way to keep us healthy. For instance, if you are sick, you build up a whole army of cells in order to defend your body. And when they're done defending, you ask them to commit cellular suicide, apoptosis, because you can't maintain every army for every illness you've ever created. Um, apoptosis is a normal part of development, right? Your hand would normally be a paddle, but cells have died in between here in order to create your digits or your fingers, okay? So that is a normal part of development, right? And a normal part of maintaining homeostasis, but it also is what is used if your cells are out of control. So, or you have damaged DNA. So on your notes, apoptosis is defined as programmed cell death. And remember that checkpoint, um, G1 checkpoint, there are P53 proteins that are little assassins that go through and kill off your cells if they cannot fix them. And it is a normal, it's just a balance between mitosis and apoptosis to keep your numbers just right. Okay, a balance between mitosis and apoptosis to maintain the normal level of somatic cells. And this prevents tumors from developing. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, and this is 5.2, maintaining the chromosome number for growth and repair is all about mitosis. But the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is about chromosome structure and actually appearance of the nucleus. So right here, this clear line out here, that is your nuclear envelope. When you look inside of the nucleus, remember there's the nucleolus, that dark staining, and then um, in the center, and that's where you're making um, a lot of the rRNA that you need for ribosomes. Okay, just put a pin in that. But when you look at a nucleus, you don't see these rod-shaped chromosomes unless you're actually doing mitosis. Normally, there's this modeled-like appearance of staining and non-staining portions of your nucleus. And I want to differentiate between those. So the dark staining areas here, that is called heterochromatin. Hetero means difference. So you can have see a difference between the light and the dark. This is dark staining because this DNA is not active. It's very condensed and super coiled up on itself. And it's basically DNA that is put away. So it is dark staining, non-active DNA. This lighter colors in here, this is called euchromatin. It doesn't stain because the DNA is spread out. And this is DNA that's actively getting transcribed and translated. So on your notes where it says chromosome structure, next to that, I would like you to put uh, next to euchromatin, it is active and non-staining, whereas heterochromatin is not active and it stains well. All right. Now, following um, S and G2 stages of interphase, so that's the next thing on your notes, little letter A, following S and G2 stages of interphase, cells prepare for mitosis. So what happens is the DNA, whether it is supercoiled or not, is going to all need to be condensed into chromosomes so we can accurately sort the DNA into each of the daughter cells. So chromatin is a mixture of DNA and proteins, and it starts to coil up into rod shapes. 
And when it does that, because they have all already replicated, they're gonna they're going to be visible as what's called sister chromatids because the DNA is replicated during the S stage. So the chromosomes appear as double. And those are your sister chromatids, two copies due to the S stage and joined by a centromere. So let me show you how that looks, okay? So these are your sister chromatids. They are duplicates of the original DNA. And so we wanna look to see how does that get built? And it's kind of like, if I took my hair, right, and I started making little braids all over my head, and then I started braiding those braids together and braiding those braids together till I had one massive braid. I don't have very much hair, so that wouldn't work out so well for me, okay? And so you have this coiling upon coiling. So let's take a look at this DNA right here. Now look at the size and where we're zoomed in at, okay? So here's your DNA double helix. What the DNA does is it winds around these histone proteins. These histone proteins form groups of eight um, called nucleosomes, and it's like thread that you're spooling on um, wrapping the DNA around it. Okay, so once you have that organized, then you start twisting those together and you coil together your nucleosomes. And it's like we're getting farther and farther and farther away from the nucleus here. And so then you start twisting those together and twisting those together and condensing and condensing until you have this chromosome. So on your notes, the organization DNA winds around histone protein spools and forms a nucleosome. So this is your nucleosome right here. All right, and um, the nucleosomes then begin coiling until condensed into a chromosome, until condensed into a chromosome. So just for the purposes, let's just kind of clarify here. During interphase, the DNA just appears like a mess, right? Like a hairball. Some of it's staining, dark staining, and or some of it not, depending on if it's active DNA or not. But as you move into the stages of mitosis, and this occurs during the first stage of that called pro prophase, it condenses into the rod-shaped chromosomes. Now, it, if during the S stage, if I pre-coiled it, okay, it would, this would be just a single chromosome, but because you've done the S stage of interphase, that's why it appears as a doubled chromosome. And these are referred to sister chromatids, all one chromosome still, but it has two parts to it, sister chromatids, and they are held together by a centromere. Okay, and here's another picture of what that would look like. This is one chromosome consisting of two chromatids. And in essence, what you're doing in mitosis is just separating those sister chromatids so that each daughter cell gets one of those chromatids. That's all you're doing here in mitosis. So let's review haploid versus diploid here for just a moment. And this is gonna become really important here when we get into myomyomyosis. But I wanna remind you that when you were formed, right, your mom sent a chromosome number one in the egg and your dad sent a chromosome one in the sperm. So you have two copies of the same chromosome. They are referred to as homologous pairs. They are the same size, the same shape, and they code for the same characteristics. Your mom might have told you to have brown eyes. Your dad's allele might have told you to have blue eyes, but they both code for eye color. So when you look over here, diploid, okay, this where it says 2N, it's your mom gave you N and your dad gave you N, so that's why you have two N, two copies of each chromosome. So this right here is showing you a total of one, two, three, four, five, six chromosomes, right? Six chromosomes, but how many pairings do we have? We have three homologous pairs, the green pair, the blue pair, and the purple pair. When we do myomyosis, getting ready for sex, Okay, we're gonna get down to where you only have one version, either the mom or the dad chromosome in each of your sperm or egg, and that is called a haploid cell. And why? Because a haploid plus a haploid, N plus N will make 2N a diploid cell through fertilization. So to get from this 2N to N, that's gonna be myomyomyosis, and that's gonna be part two of this video. What we're gonna be talking about is just mitosis. I wanna copy all the chromosomes and I wanna make sure every single cell gets all six of these chromosomes. So on your notes, diploid number 2N is when you have two full sets of chromosomes. When you have two full sets of chromosomes, one set was received from each parent. This is normal for your somatic or body cells. 
a haploid number is N, when you have only one set of chromosomes, like what you're seeing over here, and it's a mix of parental chromosomes to generate sperm or egg, and these are called gametes. So you're gonna get either, either one of the greens, either one of the blues, either one of the purples, and these are this would be a gamete in order to get two gametes fused to form a um, diploid body cell, right? So here, let me show you a little chart okay of what diploid numbers are so if we look down here at homo sapiens our diploid number is 46 we have 46 total chromosomes in and 23 came from my mom and 23 came from my dad right so i have 23 homologous pairs if you look right here at a potato it has two more chromosomes than us its diploid number its 2n number is 48 so its haploid number would be 24 exactly now remember the point of mitosis right is for growth and for repair so on your notes where it says function mitosis by somatic cells is for growth and repair now as an adult the only my whole body right some parts of it are not going to grow uh, but I do have some cells still doing repair plants they are always growing they have parts of their tissues that are always growing their apical meristems on either end um, for instance and so they can continue growing throughout their life so for plants uh, meristematic tissue in plants can always do mitosis Okay, so for the last part of this video, we just want to go through the steps and stages of mitosis. Now, this is just giving you an overview of mitosis. So here I can see a cell, and just for ease, we're not gonna do all 46 chromosomes. This cell has one, two, three, four cells, or sorry, four chromosomes in it. Let's just say the blue ones are for dad and the red ones are for mom, okay? And this 2N number is four right, two and diploid, because I got an N number, the blue one's from dad, and a small and a big red from mom. Now, because I'm doing mitosis, all four of those chromosomes are gonna replicate during the S stage of interphase, and then to do mitosis correctly, I need to make sure each daughter cell looks like this parent cell up here. So I basically have to get all of them to replicate, line up in the center, and separate, and so each daughter cell will get four chromosomes. So you on mitosis, the purpose is to generate two identical cells to this parent cell. So let's just go through the stages of it. This, this one, a lot happens during prophase. So let's go through, um, and then we'll write it down here in our notes. So th this is early, uh, middle, and late prophase. So at the beginning, what you can see here, these are your centrioles. If you recall, those are the ones that kind of look like churros, right? And so your centrioles have doubled. This is an animal cell, so it has centrioles. Your nuclear envelope is starting to break down. Your nucleus is going to disappear. Your chromosomes are starting to condense, coil up like the braids that I told you about into those rod-shaped chromosomes. Now, as these centrioles move to either end, either pole, you can see them migrating throughout here. These extending across, if you remember from our discussion of the cell about the cytoskeleton, these are microtubules, the largest part of the cytoskeleton. And these are gonna help move and arrange our chromosomes that they're in the right place. So you can see the centrioles are migrating to either end. They're shooting out these microtubules that are gonna help organize our chromosomes. This area around where it shoots out in all areas, that, that is called an aster, where it's shooting like a star, okay? So those are all the stages of prophase. So let's put those in our notes. Prophase, the chromosomes consisting of sister chromatids become visible. The chromosomes consisting of sister chromatids become visible. The nuclear envelope and nucleolus break down. And centrosomes with spindle fibers move to the poles. So the centrioles are sitting in centrosomes, move to the poles, and then asters form. All right. Then the next stage in our, in our dance here is all the chromosomes, or all four of them, in this case, are lined up here in the middle. So in metaphase, the chromosomes meet in the middle. And then in anaphase, what's happening is where there are the two sister chromatids like this, what you're seeing in anaphase is you're seeing them and the microtubules are helping you do this. They're getting pulled away. The sister chromatids are getting pulled away. So anaphase, sister chromatids pulled, pulled and pushed apart. 
And then in telophase, what's going on right here is you're beginning to do what's called cytokinesis and right that that's kind of an overlap on top of telophase which just deals with the nucleus you can see your nuclear envelopes reforming you're re-getting your nucleolus and then your chromosomes are going to start to decondense so telophase the nuclear membranes with nucleolus reform so you're reforming your nuclear envelope sister chromatids are now called chromosomes and they start to unwind now, cytokinesis, division of the cytoplasm, occurs on top of telophase simultaneously. And in animal cells, um, we, have, we form what's called a cleavage furrow. That's what you're seeing right here. It's pinching off. To cleave is to separate. And so you can see right here, cytokinesis animal style, you're pinching off. So on your notes, division of the cell, you're forming two cells in cytokinesis, right? Because mitosis is just about the nucleus. And in animal cells, cleavage furrow indents the plasma membrane, indents the plasma membrane. Now, in plant cells, it's different, okay? Because in plant cells, you have cell walls. So you build what's called a cell plate first, and then a cell wall. Now, here we can recognize the other stages, right? Here is prophase. You can see the chromosomes starting to condense. Here is metaphase. They're meeting in the middle. Anaphase, the sister chromatids are getting separated. And then telophase, you're reforming your nuclear envelopes. And cytokinesis, you're building that um, cell plate, which will become a cell wall. Okay, so here you can see building that cell plate. All right, so now what I want to do, oh, Okay, so in plant cells, let me go back here, sorry. In plant cells, the cell wall does not permit furrowing. Instead, a cell plate forms, which will become the cell wall. All right, now real quickly, I want to I'll go back here. I am going to teach you the mitosis song. All right, I'll back up a little bit so you can see me. Okay, so the whole thing is called mitosis. The first stage is prophase. The chromosomes, I'm just doing two here, the chromosomes become visible, the nuclear envelope and the nucleolus disappear, radiating microtubules, asters, then they meet in the middle at metaphase, away at anaphase, to nuclei at telophase, cytokinesis. So that's a little song we learned in my class just to make sure we understand and can remember all of those stages. All right, so next, um, let's talk about what happens in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes, remember, do not have linear chromosomes. They have a single circular chromosome. And what happens is that single circular chromosome will replicate Okay, so there you can see that has occurred. And then basically they attach to either end here, and then you do what's called binary fission, just separates into two cells. So on your notes for cell division in prokaryotes, a single circular chromosome is located in the nucleoid region. Remember, you don't have a nucleus, right? And binary fission, the chromosome replicates first, then cell elongates and builds a cell membrane and wall between the two identical chromosomes, between the two identical chromosomes. So that's it um, for um, part one. Part one was all about, remember, your cell cycle, the structure of the chromosome, and the stages of mitosis. And we also differentiated between haploid and diploid cells. And then the next video, part two, we're going to discuss my oh my meiosis and getting ready for sex. All right. So if you're one of my students, I'll see you in class.